started here. I just started the recording, and I'll just be a minute or so while I'm looking for something to talk about. Also, apolog apologies for my voice here. I it have, like, a really, really tiny cold, but it's, like, making my voice all weird. <laughs> so it's, like, oh, it's deep and raspy at the moment. Bad guys. It's, uh... <laughs> I think this is like a typical game where I thought I did okay, but I felt like there were a few mistakes I made and I couldn't, you know, really work out what. Alright, so here we, we seem to notice that the Doom was, was slept a little bit late there, so we kind of see him slept, and then we take a second to find him when he's like below us, so it's just kind of a slow reaction time, which is demonstrating to me that maybe our awareness is something already that is needing a little bit of work on it. It's just knowing what's happening around us. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, when we when we see that he slept, honestly, like with how many people are here, we might we basically what we're gonna want to do is because we have so many people who can shoot at him, right? And he, like, let, let's say we just walk up to him and we can like just get a full. Sh like left click into his head most of the time we probably won't need a hook here like as you see we like, we kill him and then we hook and then the hook just cancels so just in that situation be aware they probably won't need the hook and you probably just want to want to hold on to it or at least see if you do need it right see if he wakes up or not all right Okay, so here we kind of kind of have a lull in time where we're not really doing much. So this we'll we'll see if this continues up and like is a thing that happens consistently. But this is what you call actions per minute. And if you compare, like for example, a, a bronze player to a grandmaster player, a grandmaster player is efficient with every single second of their game, right? And they're doing something all the time, not perfectly, but they're they're all, it's a lot better than a bronze player. Whereas a bronze player is gonna you know walk around, go pew pew shoot shoot, and then they're gonna go, oh wow, this is such a beautiful map, right? And they're gonna like you know they're they're gonna take a lot of time to pause in between what they're doing. So here you notice how we kind of like we, we we shoot the doom fist, and then we take a long pause where we don't really do anything here. So like we shoot, so one, two, three, okay, and then we will, and then we heal, get back and heal. Maybe healing's not necessary when we're only down like a hundred HP here, right? And if anything, we should probably should have healed faster while we're like while we're walking there. So, um, in, in the time for for like from the last time we shot at something is like about like ten seconds, right? One, two, three, four, five. Six, right, and then okay, now we're back, right? So we just took a long little pause there when probably wasn't necessary. <laughs> Unfortunate. Yeah, then I fell off the map. Yeah. Right. Um. Now we're at one minute here. I think we're gonna talk about distances with our left click and right click real quick. Um, as that's gonna be a, a pretty massive thing when it comes to knowing how to do damage on Roadhog. Right. So we're just gonna come in here real quick. Just give me a moment. I'm a little bit slow in game here. Okay, so your right click, your you have two shots, different types of shooting. Your right click and your left click. Um, mm -hmm. Or sorry, on Xbox, I keep uh, I forgot that you're on Xbox. So that's gonna be you know your right trigger versus yeah, left, left yeah. trigger. I'm I'm, a more, I'm pretty sure right. So um, yeah. that means that we come up against you know other people. It, it's really gonna depend on the distance, right? So um, 10 meters is the explosion distance for your right click. So you're gonna notice how it, it's a little ball and then it's gonna actually explode right. and divide a, a up itself, right? right. It explodes at 10 meters, right? Anything within 10 meters, so even if we come to 9 meters, it's, no matter what distance we're at, it's going to do half damage. Oh, actually, what the heck? What, what happened here? Maybe not 9 meters, actually. Oh, 9 meters, actually, the explosion rate is. I just learned something. All right, so we move forward t a tiny little bit, and you're going to notice that it actually does half damage no matter what range you're at. So even if we're right here, right, it's still, it's, it's still going to do half damage, right? Which is just not as effective as if we yeah. were left clicking. So if we come back to this 10 meters, which actually I think what it is is that even while standing here, our body's just so fat that it technically counts as 10 meters. <laughs> but I don't know. We'll see. It, but and in any case, if we're standing here, the distance where it explodes, right? And we and we shoot at him, we can do basically half damage, right? Um, if we hit headshot, sometimes we can do even more than that. If we hit like land all our pe pellets, like if we land all our pellets, we can do even more than half damage, right? So, uh, in any case, when you're within anything within this distance, you're going to be wanting to left click because you're just doing more, right? This is the nine right. meters we were at before, right? You're just doing more damage within this range. So anything within this is left clicking. Anything past this is right clicking because now at this range, we're doing that much damage, whereas we can actually one shot from this distance, right? Um, 
right clicking one shot like that, right? Um, and then anything past that is just me right clicking. But in that last game we were in, we were sometime like I already I'd, I'd seen us right clicking too close, and then I'd seen us like left clicking. We were like back here, right? So right. we just want to get that range down so we know when to use what, right? And then we can just go ahead and get back into that lobby. All right. Now okay. we were on Busan there, right? I believe that this is it. It's pretty cool you can import replays up from a different yep. uh, um, platform. Oh, this is not it. Alright, I guess I was. It was okay, so this is a. So it's this Busan game. Alright. So let's get back to where we were. So if we accidentally fell off the map, <laughs> it just make sure we're being aware yeah. aware of the edge, right? So again, that's yeah. Not really I was aware of the edge there. That was just a yeah. I'm not that normally that <laughs> clumsy. Yep. Okay. Yeah, Very I nice. know you can shoot at him whilst he's got that up. Yeah. So here, the first thing I'm looking at is the fact that maybe we should be like tilted up here and trying to be hitting his head, right? Or right. at least aiming at his neck. This means we're doing a whole lot more damage than if we're hitting his body, right? So mm. just make sure we're hitting headshots, especially when you know they're pulled into this spot where they can't really move away from it, right? It's a it's crowd control. Mm -hmm. We know where they're going, so just go for the headshot when it's going to be more efficient and we're going to be doing more damage. Yep. Again, awareness. Make sure we're paying attention to this. Uh, you know, paying attention to the game around us, right? We've so far we've made a bunch of awareness decision. Uh, awareness. We had a bunch of awareness problems, right? So we want to make sure that we're paying attention to our environment. We can go more into that, um, more into depth if we need to. That was better. Hit him in the head a little more, but still didn't. Right. He got smacked off the edge. <laughs> yep. Again, be careful about this right here. As soon as we see the break here, we might probably are gonna want to, you know, back up away and get away, get away from the edge, right? You're only able to get booped if you allow yourself to get booped, right? That's it, for the most part, right? You're, all, you're sometimes you're gonna get booped, right? But uh, if when you put like a, um, you know, a really good player, like if you put a grandmaster player into a plot lobby, they're probably just never gonna get booped, right? It's not gonna happen just because they don't put themselves near edges, and that means that when we see that they have something that can boop us, like the brig, then we want to make sure we're not running near the edges. So he, as soon as we see break here, like we see her come down, I'd be like, oh, back up, all right? Yeah. Because we see the break and boop us, right? So again, I I, I I don't see people play her that much. I almost forget sometimes that she has that. Mm. Yep. That it can knock you off, but... Yep, exactly, and you just want to remember that because team comp does dictate play style, right? Mm. The different things that they're running is going to change how we're playing. This would be the same thing if they're on a Sigma. It'd be the same thing if they're on a Do like uh, for Doomfist here, right? Because both of them can boop us off. Diva can boop us off, right? We just have to be careful of all those guys um, because we don't want to be standing next to the edge if they can boop us off, right? Mm -hmm. Very nice. Follow up your your hook with, or your shooting with a melee, right? This would actually finish off Mercy here, if you notice. Right when when we right, shoot her yeah. down, she's down to. Oh, actually, the, she might actually live with one HP here, but um, it would you know that that's a combo that you want to go for. That's going mm -hmm. to burst them down even further right, after yeah. you get the the hook in. So you're gonna go hook, shoot, melee, melee, and then you can also add in another shot afterwards. Right, because she gets away, oh, almost gets away there, right, because we don't add that in. Okay, so far, good uh, E usage. So before we go for an ult, okay, there's a few different things that we want to look for. So first, I'm, I'm kind of taking a look at this first. Okay, so um, first off, no one's near us at all, right? So when we're using our ults, it has what you call spread, so it does not have fall off damage, so it's not going to do less damage the further away we are, but it does get really, really spread out. So when something's right next to us, right, they're right. soaking up everything, every single pellet, 
But if you're shooting at something like Diva over here, you're hitting her with like two pellets, right? Because she's so because it's spreading out to where it's going like all the, it's covering this whole area. Right. All right. So that okay. means that most of the time when we're ulting, we're gonna want to ult when we are next to things, not when we're super mm -hmm. far away from things. Mm -hmm. And here, everything is super far away from us. I think I was I was thinking that this was a, our chance to get the objective. Mm. Um, if yep. I could just knock a couple off the edge, but she can obviously fly back on anyway. Mm. Yeah, and most of the time you're going to want to prioritize um, ca like winning the fight over just capping the objective. It, for the most part, I would try to change that like mentality. Usually mm -hmm. winning the fight is going to be slightly more important because it means that you get the kills and get the objective. Right? Whereas if you just focus on the objective, you could end up w losing the fight as a result. Um, so... Here, yeah, we just want to go for kills. On top of that, keep in mind that we can go for a hook into our ult. So, for like, I can demonstrate that next time we go to the training range. But if we want to get someone next to us, right, for example, like here, if Doomfist peaks up top, we could, like, hook Doomfist right up next to us and then ult immediately. And then yeah. that means that he's, like, an inch from us, right? And then now we're doing a ton of damage into him. Yeah. Well, I never even thought of doing that, to yep. be honest. Stunned out of it, anyway. Okay. Very good. Okay, that's the range where we should be right clicking yeah, that left clicking, yeah, right? I so see you can that so now. you can see yeah. it. Yep. No, How we just uh, do tickling then, damage. Then, you know. Yeah, <laughs> tickle damage. <laughs> okay, watch your health bar when we're when we're using our when we're using our E, yeah. right? So here we go, shoo, shoo, and then we press. Look at when we press our our health button is when we're at five hundred and ninety one yeah. health, right? So <laughs> I feel that when I did it yeah, as well. <laughs> exactly. So awareness, right? Make sure we're paying attention to our health bar when we take. We we pay attention to our health bar when we see we're taking damage, and we that's also the indication that we know uh, when we need to use our E is when we've seen that we take damage, right? You know that you take damage. Um, so look at the right here. We're taking damage. Look at the right side, of, uh, look right on, on right next to your crosshair here. You're gonna see that there's a big old red mark that shows you the direction from which you're being mm -hmm. damaged. Mm -hmm. You're going to see on the top of your screen that uh, there's red marks as well. That's gonna show you the direction of which you're taking damage as well. Um, as as well as you can see here, there's more red marks above our crosshair. Right, that again is saying that we're being damaged from the front. Um, mm -hmm. So, therefore, we know that we're being damaged. When we see that we're being damaged, that might be where we're, we're taking a look at our health bar. We can hear people shooting at us. We can see them shooting at us. We are, we are going to hear our character make grunting sounds and going, oh, right? That's where we pay attention to your health bar. And when we pay attention to your health bar, that's going to allow us to use our health, uh, our, you know, our E better, right? And be able to heal ourselves a little bit more efficiently. I think the um, the the use of the thing, oh, it's just as you say, it's just awareness. But I think it was because I assumed I was going to take more damage than I did. Yeah, exactly, and you, you just yeah, want to make I think I get main. healed, uh, yeah, because yep. as you said, I was in like 591 or something. Yep, exactly. I actually did it. <laughs> so already awareness is seeming like probably one of the bigger things that we're looking at at the moment. Um, so why don't we just like, you know, go into some of the application process of that, because awareness could seem like a little bit weird of a um, of a thing to try to apply and get better at. Like it's, it might seem mm -hmm. like it, you know, it might be a little bit more difficult than some other things to try to learn and improve on. So basically, you know, you're going to be doing it the exact same way that you're doing anything you're trying to learn from this session or in general is while you're playing, you need to make sure that you're focusing on what you're doing, right? Not autopiloting through your gameplay, not just focusing on winning, but focusing on the thing you're trying to improve at. So th in this case, that would be awareness. So if we're playing this game our, or in, a, in our next games, right, our brain's going to look something like this where we're thinking awareness, 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 right? And when we do that, we're giving ourselves a constant reminder and we're putting effort and energy and focus into focusing on awareness, right? And when you do that, that starts to, we start to look around us a bit, a little bit more, right? We start to look around our surroundings. We start to listen. We start to pay attention. And when we do that, we're going to be able to make better decision making, right? Where you can and not inherently make good decisions without understanding what's happening, right? If you don't know what's happening, you're going to make bad decisions like we've seen multiple times so far, right? Um, yeah. And then, you know, once you start to do that for a long enough time, it will form as a habit. And when it forms as a habit, you no longer have to put in that same effort and focus. And mm -hmm. now that means you can put your effort and focus into a different area, right? And start to form a different habit. Now, you know, uh, you don't want to focus on everything at once. We're going to talk about quite a bit 
for this session. Um, and if you're trying to focus on everything at once, you're going to get overwhelmed. Instead, try to focus on like one category of things or like, you know, one or three smaller things. And then that's how you really look to apply the things we're talking about here. Okay. All right. Yeah, good headshots there. I like it. Okay, make sure that you're reloading every time you have a lull where you're not shooting at anything. So like, if we're if we're not shooting anything here, we just want to reload. So here we just kind of like you know we don't have we have one ammo left and we're not doing anything at all. Um, this is where we just reload to the ammo. I think I was my health bar, thinking I need to get back up to six hundred. <laughs> mm -hmm. didn't. Yep. It's just a, it's a just a habit that we want to get into. So like, anytime we're not shooting, we're just reloading, so we have it. That's probably I wasn't using the right shot there again, I reckon. Too mm. far away. Yup. Alright. Okay, using it a little bit too early again. So, so far, um, ability usage is another thing that we're going to want to take a look at. Um, as health, with our healing, we're using it very frequently uh, mm -hmm. when we don't need it at all. And then on top of that, with our hooks, we're missing quite a bit of them. So, um, when it comes to our hooks, again, big thing is just making sure we're putting attention and focus into it. The second thing is making sure that we're not just like kind of throwing them out after a half a second, right? Most of the time we want to put a couple seconds of thought into how we're landing it, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going, we're kind of like, for example here, like if we're, if we're looking like right it now, was we, <laughs> what are you saying? It was a it was a very um, hopeful hook. <laughs> yeah. So, like how how we'd be approaching this is if like we see Diva, we're thinking, okay, I want to hook Diva. So I'm tracking Diva, make sure my crosser's on her. Put put like a, we're gonna try to track her for a couple seconds here until we finally see the right opportunity, and then we're gonna hook. Right. It's, it basically, it's a couple seconds of a process. We're not going oh Diva and then hooking immediately, right? Um, which you're gonna see here is kind of like how we go. We just kind of go oh person hook immediately, right? And when we go, oh, person, hook immediately, that means we put a lot less thought and effort into it. And that means that we're going to be missing a lot of them, which uh, so far we have missed. I'd probably say, like, if I were just to put, a, like, a, maybe a, a number on it, we'd maybe have, like, a 40% hook accuracy at the moment, um, something around that. So we definitely want to be having a higher percent hook accuracy because if we're having a 40 percent hook accuracy that means we're hitting less than half of them so we want to be hitting more than half of them right so that we're getting more kills more damage more you know everything you know more kills more damage means more ults means more fight wins means more game wins so we really want to focus on that okay the other thing here is that i don't think that dropping the point is the play here as it's dropping the point um, when there's a lot of people on, we probably want to clear high ground first. So, um, first off, like there are a bunch of people off up on high ground and high ground's really, really good most of the time, right? High ground's a really good thing to have. And it's also good for the enemy team as well. So when they have a high ground, we probably want to take it from them. Even if it's not good for us, we want to take it from them so that they don't have the high ground. So on, on top of that, that would have also been a really easy opportunity to do it because, you know, back here before we dropped, when we were first coming up, we actually had most of our team up on high ground. Like if we if we look at it like this, it right now is a one two three four versus a one two, right? It's just Diva and Mercy up on high ground. So we could pretty easily kill those two, right? Or Doomfist is coming up as well, right? If we just stayed up there and, and just pushed them off, and then we could maybe drop afterwards. But I think the dropping here is just a little bit early, and then also kind of isolates us from our team. Yeah, I was gonna say that back. I get isolated way too many times in this game. Yep. I kept thinking that as I was playing it. <laughs> I think it's just. Um, oh, that's a good old. Oh, straight away. <laughs> Alright, that's unfortunate. I think it was. Yeah, I think it was just a case of um, being like too keen to just ask, because they have like 99%, to be fair. Mm hmm. Uh, yeah, oh, so finish. at this point, it's we need to touch, oh, right? But we didn't need to touch like 15 seconds ago. Alright. 
Yeah, oh, sorry. Yeah. Whoops. Make sure we're paying attention to the things that can block our hook right again. Mm -hmm. Just making sure we're paying attention to our environment. Making sure we're thinking about what things can block our hook, right? Diva can't block hook. Uh, the, literally the only I two things... I think I assumed that it was about to go down because it looks sort of cracked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, usually it's good to just confirm that it's gonna go down, right? Yeah. That that's not that's not that I don't think that's even like half cracked. Like if we go to monkey's screen, right. that's he this or sorry, it has like two hundred and seventy two, right? So we yeah. can't we can't really make that assumption. It's usually just a good idea to like shoot at it a second time and then go for it. Right. That way we kinda guarantee that it's down and then we can hook but obviously it doesn't go down. Um we just wanna be careful because they have two things that can block our hooks. They have Brig shield and monkey bubble, right? And that's it. That nothing else like block shield that they can block our hook, right? So we just want to make sure that we're paying attention to those things and trying to avoid them and get around them. All right. Yeah, a little bit more out of too far of a range. All right, and then the round's done. All right, so I think real quick we're gonna go over kind of what we're looking at as strengths and weaknesses. Um, to begin, so starting off with abilities i probably say abilities are in the kind of medium category at the moment it's seeming um of needing to be worked on a little, a little bit inconsistent um and then on from there i think that ultimate usage again is a little bit more in the i'm honestly more ults but that's looking in the uh, probably i'd probably say a little bit less important than our abilities because honestly um whole hog is in like the most insane ultimate and abilities are going to be coming around more consistent. I'd probably say, like, over the course of a game, Hook and Take a Breather are just going to be more useful assets than your whole hog is going to be. And yeah, because when you see Rodok played really well, he's, he's freaking impossible to kill. It's like yep. you just get 300 mm. down and then 300 back up. Yep, exactly. So um, I'd probably say that um, those two are looking equally inconsistent, though I would put the your ability usage is more of an important thing to work on. Um, at the moment, then on from there, make general mechanics. I think um, one of the bigger issues is that we're is that we're messing up when we're shooting. But it also seems as if we're um, to correct me if I'm wrong here. But are we manually clicking? So we're going click, click, click when we're shooting. Uh, no, I think I hold the trigger. You down. hold the trigger down. Okay, because yeah. it seems it, it seems slightly slow. Maybe there fire, was right? some. There was maybe some where I'm going to do the odd one. Maybe. Okay, know. well, that that'd be something I guess maybe to think yeah, about next I, time you're playing. Of is, yeah. is take a look at it. I'll try to I'll try to take a look at our timing, but it does seem seem slightly slow to me at the moment. So that's something to take a look at. And then I probably say mechanics again. The the only other thing that really is is uh, at the moment that I, I'm looking at is the fact that you know that we're shooting at the wrong distances, and then also maybe hitting head shots more often. We might talk about some cross replacement later on here. Um, and then when it comes to positioning, I think we might talk about positioning at some point, but not um, too much to say at the moment on that. And then we'll maybe get into that in later on. And then awareness does is seeming like probably the biggest thing that we're looking at so far is that has led to a ton of mistakes um, being hit off the map twice. Right. Uh, and then also just not really doing as much as we could because we messed up a lot of times with our awareness. So it's just a whole bunch of tiny things in awareness that have added mm -hmm. up. Not to not to derail anything, or and if you want to just stick on this one, uh, that's fine. But I'd be kind of interested because I, I feel like this was kind of one of my worst games. Um, oh. I would, I'd be kind of interested to see what you think on a game where I felt like I played better as well. Okay, well, yeah, that's that's definitely the games that like we we try to go over anyways. Um... Is is games where you where you thought you played well, or at least like averagely. If this yeah. is if this is a worse game, was... then then you're making mistakes that you don't usually make. And if you're making mistakes you don't usually make, then that's not very accurate. But, yeah, I reckon right. that's probably true. If uh, if you go to the DPS replay, do we want right. to take that one? Is that yeah, right? Sure, that's fine with me. So what are we that looking at? Which one? The T one JS K Q Y. Oh, I don't yeah. know if it's I don't know if it's gonna show me the um the giant tower. Is it okay? Legion tower. Uh, okay. Because it doesn't show me the, the code is, anymore. This is me as Reaper, and I felt like I played... I, I, I died once or twice where I felt like um, maybe I could have avoided it, but I felt like generally this was like a better game and more representative, certainly of how I do with Reaper. All right. <clears throat> All right. Um, the other thing I would mention and bring up here is because I, I forgot to mention at the beginning, though, is that you... Do, so from what you're saying, you're playing a lot of different characters. Now, out of anything that I say today, this yeah. is the most um, up to you thing. This is the most objective thing. This is completely up to where your priorities are and what your goals are. 
Um, if your priorities are to play and have fun, and that's your goal while you're, while you're playing, then pl and you have fun flexing around and playing different roles, that's completely fine. Do go ahead and do that. But if your goal is to improve and you have more fun like winning games and climbing SR, then if that is your goal and your priorities, then my recommendation would be to stick with one role yeah. and more specifically maybe on like two to three characters within that yeah. role as spreading yourself really really thin is gonna be pretty bad for you um yeah. in terms of how fast you can climb because every single role like each role is gonna be co playing completely different from the other role yeah. and on top uh -huh. of that each character is gonna be playing completely different with different play styles different positioning different ult usage ability usage and when you stick on one character you have a ton more time to practice at those things All right let's say you like split up your time between six different characters like with 600 hours right that's 100 hours on each character if you put that on two characters that is now 300 hours you have on each character rather than 100 right so three times the amount of time you have dedicated right mm -hmm. you put that at three now you have 200 times that's two times the amount of time right so just you you don't spread yourself too thin if that's what your goals are but it, it's really up yeah to i mean i do play overwatch purely for fun i yeah. just would like mm -hmm. to get a bit better you know i i, I do have, I, I think you have fun at pretty much most stuff when you win more so yep. um yeah i mean i haven't really thought about getting super competitive with it or anything like that but you know i, I just want to generally improve so uh -huh. yeah where i'm making yeah. mistakes so useful yeah then if you're in that then if you're in that boat then maybe just like you might want to tone it down slightly but that's still you know if you're just like have fun it's up to you what characters you're playing i to be honest i don't i do stick around sort of uh, mm. three or three or four sort of main characters mm. so. okay so we just within all the just within the different roles yeah i just kind of picked one just punch those and ball the map <laughs> yeah. all right I just kind of picked one from each category because I didn't know what we'd want to look at, but yeah, I kind of figured that. Mm -hmm. Alright. Oh no, I didn't get lucky. So here, probably just, you know, I think we're trying to do the reload cancel here to get just get our ammo back might just be more efficient if we just you know reload and then that way we have it to get away most of the time you're gonna use fate wraith as a defensive ability to get away from mm -hmm. people that's just how it's used most and then most of the time your t tp is an offensive ability where you use it to get up next to people um or behind people so here we just kind of use that incorrectly and then we die as a result right and uh, of course deaths are st things you want to look to improve on and cut out right because this this death means that we have a negative impact on the fight and we you know we lose impact and then that means that our team might end up you know losing the fight because we died right so we, we want to look to just make sure we're, we're not doing that there and then obviously that's a big mistake. I will get my revenge. All right. Something you might want to consider here is to wraith forwards because wraith is a, some wraith first, right? Because wraith is something that you want to have for the fight. So if you use the cooldown first, you're going to be recharging it first. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. On top of that, we can wraith forwards and then TP up into this window, and this gets us to the point faster. So this would probably be a much faster route than just going coming through the top here. Um, and that's kind of the order in which we probably want to sort of I figured, yeah, I think I figured I was going the long way around, so it'd probably be recharged by the time I got there. All right, so here, when we are walking back in, right, we want to take a look at how many teammates we have left alive. Make sure, again, awareness, make sure we're paying attention to um, the fight. Here it is a 6v2. Therefore, this is a lost fight, and us walking in actually just staggers us further. So um, I think it would just be a good idea to just review this real quick because this is an awareness thing. Um, kill feed, watching, and then how to know whether or not you've won or lost a fight. Um, actually, I get... Mm, I guess we don't have to go over this yet. We'll, we just continue on with it. Um, for the moment, just know that you like if you see that you've lost a fight, which this is a, a very mm -hmm. lost fight, do okay, not right. do not walk. Do, yeah, do not walk back in because that staggers you. Are you familiar with the term staggering? Uh, not really. Not really. Okay. So staggering is when you basically to simplify it when you die late. If we die late here, which we do, right? See how late we die. Maybe we can just fast forward it a little bit, right? We die late. All right. 
Do 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 do. Right. So now that means that when we die, oh, we are respawning. Right. Yeah. And our We're entire not team at the same time as our team. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. And then what happens here is our team has two decisions. We either wait for Reaper, and if they wait for us, then we've just wasted a bunch of time. Right. That's an extra mm -hmm. ten seconds that they, that we've wasted. And if they do not wait for us, then now they're walking into the fight at a disadvantage where they're down mm -hmm. to you. Right. So. Mm -hmm. This can also start stagger trains where let's say like you stagger and then you have like Reaper, or you have like Hog and Baptiste who push in without everybody else and then they stagger and then the next and then Mercy and Ryan go in without everybody yeah, else. Yeah, I've been the, on, the, I've been on the, the winning side where that happens. Mm, and it yep. feels like when you have two people coming at once and you're like, yep, exactly. Like, yeah, and you you always want to punish that, right? And you want and you want to kind of like force the enemy to do that, but you don't want to do it yourself, right? You want to try to abstain from doing that yourself. So we don't want to push in when we see the fight's lost, because then that ends up staggering us further. All right, so let's see how we do. Okay, so we read read first there. See, they're 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 basically starting the fight by the time we're like halfway back. So that that could even potentially mean that they end up being down a person by the time we get to there. Okay, look how much damage you're doing. It's, it's, you, have, you have shotguns. We Now in Reaper here, we do have both. We have spread and fall off. I believe we have fall off damage. Maybe we do not, but... Yeah, um, there we're, it is. Yeah, we're hitting like... We're, look how take, much tickle damage we're doing. We're, we're doing yeah. next to nothing from this distance. Right? Look how close she is to death. Yeah, but even at... But we're, <laughs> we're not going to do anything here, right? <laughs> Until she got healed, she was so close. Yeah, very nice. So that time it looked like it worked out. Make sure we're getting healing back before we're going in super aggressively here. Um, because we're going in when we have 100 HP. So make sure when you're low that you're requesting healing so your teammates can help mm -hmm. heal you up. So again, pay attention to our health bar. So, you know, requesting healing gives them an in-game audio cue, right? The same way that you know that, like, a Genji's bleeding because you can hear him. Your supports know Reaper needs healing and he's behind me, right? Because you press the button. So here we just want to make sure we're paying attention to our health bar and we're pressing that. So we're not going in when we're half... Right, and then let's see. Take a look at this. Um, all right, so this is a five v four. Okay, I think this is pretty decent. The only thing I would say is that we don't really seem to scout it out very much before we're going in, so we kind of end up end up death loss and getting one person with it. But honestly, it's not the most terrible. Ult. I think it's that's decent. Yeah, it was a bit of a risk. I figured that because he gains health when he's doing damage, that I would yeah. start my ult quick enough that I would gain some health. Yeah, the more of I was talking about the fact that we didn't really know who we were death blossoming because we only got one person in that, and mm -hmm. most of the time you're not gonna want to just ult one person. So I'd say yeah. that that was probably more of a wasted ult. Okay. Um, so because you know you could just end up shooting that one person. The 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 benefit of death blossom is that you're hitting multiple people at once, right? But when you're only hitting one person, then that's no different than shooting at them, and then you're not locked in an animation, right? So uh, that also is looking like it was more of a one fight, which I think soon here we'll I think we'll talk about how to know whether or not yeah. you're winning or losing a fight. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah. in that fight, we probably just didn't want to use it. Um, but that, that was on the closer side. I want to see a more definitive fight where I can, like, you know, I, uh, I can maybe demonstrate it a little bit easier how to tell whether or not you're winning or losing. Okay, um, that's the way in this thing as well because I couldn't damage it for the first few seconds that she yeah. was changing. Here we seem to change targets quite a bit, like pretty fast here. So just make sure we're sticking on one target because when we stick on one target, it means that we end up shooting them down and killing them. And this might be maybe the um, aim assist kicking in a little bit because it seems like we kind of like swap targets a little bit when we don't even want to. Um, so I, don't I tried know. playing without aim assist and I sucked. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. But in any case, just make sure you're trying to stick on the right things because here we go. Mercy, right? Mercy's one HP and then we saw the Mora. Right, and then we were on Mercy for a little bit, and then we swapped to the Echo, and then she ults, right? I and think then, that's I, they ran in the building, and I just figured that I didn't want to. I didn't want to go in there and get killed. Yeah. Um. So in any case, the the big thing here was that we saw the Mora. Probably say it was the it was the big one, and then that meant the Mercy 
tienen and then that well, might I think, be, yeah. I think for a second I just think this is going to be Mercy as I turn there yeah. so like suddenly not there <laughs> um I think he probably also could have gone away with that like keep in mind that like we could just run around that corner real quick who's going to kill us right like do we we have fade to get away very easily Reinhardt's not back yet right we're not like we can get stunned here so mm -hmm. honestly I wouldn't say that that would be too risky at all to push the Mercy and she's yeah. one HP there right yeah, I don't know what opportunity that was when I was playing. <laughs> yep. And then we swap to the Ryan for a second, and then we swap back to him, and then we swap to the the Doom Fist, and then we swap to the Mercy. Right, so you can just see how like we went swap, 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 swap. Right. Yeah. Um, if we put all of that damage that we just outputted into multiple different people in one person, they'd probably be dead by now, right? But because we spread yeah. it, because we spread it thin between so many different people, they just end up getting healed up. And staying alive, and also, like, also, what happened, what happened here with the echo? I want to see rewatch this. We, we we were shooting at the echo, and she was pretty low here. Right, and then we just kept, we looked away from here when she was pretty low there. We probably could have kept shooting at her because of how low she then is. She'd only she'd only go back to being echo with a full bar, right? But that would also stop her from being, from ulting, right? So. Right. The, at the very, that would help your help your team yeah. if you got her. But in any case here, continuing on, right, we just swap, 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 make sure we're sticking on one thing. There are times where you do want to swap targets, right? You swap targets when some, when you see someone else who's a better target. So yeah. if you see you're on a bad target or you see someone better, someone who's low, someone who's out of position, right, then we swap over to them. So here, honestly, I don't think it's a bad swap to go over to the supports, but then we swap to the Doomfist and then we swap back to the Mercy, right? It's just, it's just all around in circles and then we back off a little bit and then we go back to these guys all right um make sure that we're using our fade as an aggression meter so we mm -hmm. when we do not have fade we want to play passive when we do have fade we do uh, we want we can play we can afford to play a little bit more aggressive but we also need to pay there's your health bar here so here's a couple of th different things right so first off we fade away so we grab the health pack and then we're out right we should just keep on backing here but instead mm -hmm. we actually re-peek and come backwards right well we don't have fade so that means that here we're re-peeking into a dangerous situation where we don't have our get out of jail free card right mm -hmm. and then on top of that we we get a kill and then we see that we are 100 hp and we're super low. We can tell this because we're being shot at, because we have all the damage it's indicators, right? We have a bunch of different in things. Exactly, right? We can just fade to our team, try to get to our Baptiste, right? Who's over there, who we can actually see through the wall, right? But we end up canceling it and then we die as a result, right? So, um, so far, fade usage is looking like a pretty big one and okay. ability usage in general. Um, ults looking like, uh, you know, I, I, so far, I don't think we've been getting, we've been getting a ton of value out of them, though I, I, I'll explain how you can get more in when we talk about how to know when you, whether or not you're winning or losing some point here with better timing. Right. You don't hear this all the time, but you know so much about this game. It's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I mean, I, I played the game for a very, very long time, man. <laughs> and I've, like, yeah. uh, I've been playing for like four years, and I have like probably like 3,600, 700 hours in the game or something like that. So quite quite a bit of time to yeah. learn all this stuff. All right. Oh, all right. Um, make sure we're not walk Again, remember, you can only get pooped if we walk towards the edge. Um, mm -hmm. Make sure instead that we're just, you know, instead... We're, we're not walking near the edge. If we see that she's flying at us, we can wraith as soon as we see she flies at us. Make sure that we're hugging the inside here. Like, if we're right here, she can't boop us off unless we get double booped, right? Because if we're right here, we just go over to the edge here and we don't get booped off because we're so close. But look instead at where we are. Right? We, we peek and we were, we're hugging the inside and then we're actually going to walk towards the outside. You can see it here, right? Oh, actually, no, we don't. I, I, I correct myself, right? Um, so he actually moved us really, really far there. So in any case, we just want to make sure that we're, we're wraithing faster and we're paying attention to the fact that they have a diva. Um, the other thing is I think we're going to go over... I don't think of her as a character that knocks you off the edge very often. But... Oh, she, she definitely is. Yeah, she yeah. can definitely do that. Yeah. <laughs> so 347. All right, so we're going to go over basically your play style on Reaper and how you should be looking to play him. Yeah. So I think to clarify here, just to begin, and why why this is, I think I think for the most part you got this, but like just as a reiteration, 
um, for target priority is you don't want to be shooting at tanks, right? Tanks aren't what you, aren't what you want to shoot at because tanks have two to three times the health of other characters. They have mm -hmm. tanking abilities. They're really hard to kill. And then on top of that, supports and DPS just have statistical output that tanks don't, right? That's not to say that tanks are a bad role. It's just that DPS and supports do healing and damage. Tanks provide space. Um, so we want to be focusing healing and supports and DPS. So, um, if we're just approaching from the front line, right, we're just kind of walking in from the front, we're kind of forced to shoot at tanks. And that's what you see is there right there in that fight. We're kind of forced And the first thing we see is the diva, right? So we're shooting at the diva to start off, but it probably would be better if we came into the fight shooting instantly at Mercy instead of shooting instantly at D.Va. And that comes into how we play our playstyle in Reaper. How essentially Reaper should be played is we have an ability rotation where we... If we're, if we're saying these, this is all the enemies and they're all in point, and this is kind of the main frontal angle, right? we are going to TP behind them. Okay? We're going to be on their, instantly on their supports and DPS. We're going to shoot at some stuff until we feel like we're low health or we're being shot at by everybody or we're about to be stunned or something like that. Right? We're under pressure. And then as soon as we feel like that, we rave back to our team. Right? From here, we can poke a little bit on the front line. Right? We can help out with the tanks. Right? And then as soon as we get our wraith back, then we can TP back in and do it all over again, right? Yeah. Um, and this is your standard rotation. You do this the exact same thing when you're ulting as well, right? When you're ulting, you're going to do the same thing. We're going to just basically just TP behind them. Usually above them is also a good option, but usually you just want to go behind because that just means that they can't see you, right? But we can also go above as well. Oh, but why are you standing in the way, man? We can go above them, right? This gives us a good above angle, right? We can drop in, shoot. And then we go Death Blossom, and then that just gets us in on top of on top of their backline instantaneously without them being able to react very well. Um, on top of that, just make sure that you know I, sh I showed a little bit of a tech there when I was ulting. You can shoot and then ult, and then you get a little bit of a uh, extra damage when you're going for it because uh, it kind of uh, animation cancels into it. The other thing is when you are uh, teleporting, make sure that they cannot see either of you it's best if they cannot see where you are and where your tp is going right this makes yeah. it a completely secretive tp so for example if all the people are on point over there we can tp from here to there or here to there right and this means that our our tp is completely secretive or we could tp up to there and again tp completely secretive they don't see that we're up here right this means that we're approaching for a blossom without them being aware of where we're at if we tp while we're standing here they can see us and yeah either, you get yep. killed whilst exactly. you're watching the animation half the time, don't you? Yep, exactly. So they can shoot us, but then they can also know where we're TPing to because they can see us. They're going that now. They're going to be looking behind them, and we're going to die faster, right? Um, we can also do something like this. Right now, they they can't see us again, right? Can't see us. But if we're doing it out in the open, or even if like we're TPing out in the open, let's say like we do it here. Now again, they they just see us instantly and we die, right? So just make sure you're trying to hide both ends of your TP when you're TPing, and then just try to have that ability rotation so we can get to the the things that we want to shoot at. And this also gets us in at a close range very fast, right? And it means that we don't have to kind of come, kind of go from the front angle where we're, we can't really see very much to start off. All right, so we were on Li Shang there. All right. So, so we were right here. We got booped off. Yep. So again, just a really, really cool, good thing that we could have done was just like you know TP up to the top here. Yeah. Can, it can instantly drop on Echo. Instantly drop on Mercy. Right. Get past the front line. But you would always drop before you started shooting, obviously, because you let you don't want them to know you're up there, kind of thing. You want to. Maximize yeah, the damage. You, yeah, thing. exactly. You'd want to get close to them before you start yeah. shooting. You don't want to start mm -hmm. shooting before you're close enough. All right, so now we're coming back in here. All right, I think we'll talk about how to know whether or not you've won or lost a fight just before we get to the wrap up portion of the session. Okay, so we do TP behind. All right, um, usually. Uh, for the most part, most of your ultimates require one key component for a blossom is su the surprise advantage. When we are, it is not a surprise, so when they can all stare at us, right, and yeah. we're ulting, 
they're able to shoot at us, they're right. able to stun us, they're able to punch us, right? And therefore, we die instantaneously like we saw here. When we get the surprise advantage, so for example, like when we TP behind drop them, right, and above. drop yeah. from above, yep, then we have a good couple of seconds where they can't see us, and by that time, we've, or not, they can't see us, but they react slowly, and then by that point, they're either dead, or we have enough healing because we're shooting enough people. In this situation, this is a poor blossom because of the fact mm -hmm. that they have so many different ways to stop us from blossoming that it just mm -hmm. doesn't work out. Right. The other thing See, is, I, yeah, I, as an amateur, uh, I just kind of think of, oh, well, this is a good time to use it because there's a lot of enemies in close proximity. Yep. It's yeah. more. It's it's more of the fact that they just can react I, to it fast and get us right. <laughs> And then dead. Boop. <laughs> Let's see. When we go in here, I want to I wanna see it real quick again. So we come back from spawn. So we're coming back here. Um, we, again, just don't see that we lose everybody. So this is how we're going to we're, we're gonna re-go over this. Um, now, uh, actually, mm, again, this is actually decently close. So, uh, okay, so this is a hard, like, I don't think we've had any really good examples of this in this game, but we're going to talk about how to tell whether or not you've won or lost the fight here. Just all the same, because we're about to get into the end of the session. Um, so, how to tell whether or not you're winning or losing is all about paying attention to kill feed. When we right. watch kill feed, the top right corner of our screen, and this is a part of awareness, we can tell whether or not we're winning or losing. When we are up one to two people, we can play aggressive. When we get, that means that we're happy, we have an advantage, and we can afford to get it more aggressive because they have less people to shoot at us, heal and tank. Right. Um, on top of that, when we are up two to three people, that is a one fight. When we have won a fight, we no longer need to use ults because if we do, that's just overkill. And then, yeah. if we have won a fight, we also want to look to push forwards to stagger the enemy team, right? So that we can kind of force them to um, get bad spawns and get the point faster and whatnot. And when we are down one to two people, that is a disadvantage. When we're at a disadvantage, we didn't necessarily lose yet. We just might want to play a little bit more passive because we are losing the fight, right? Mm -hmm. Now, on top of that, we're going to, uh, when, it, when we're down two to three, that is a lost fight. When we're down two to three, that means that we no longer want to be using ults. We want to make sure that we are getting out if possible or not even walking in, in the first place. Or uh, if we can't get out, we're going to make sure that we let them kill us so that we're respawning fast. So in this instance, it is a 3v1 on point, right? I would imagine that Reinhardt's going to die soon enough because he has teammates there. Now we TP in. Right, this is semi-winnable because it's a one-two versus three. It's not, it's not too terrible, but they also have more people coming back faster. Right, they're about to get another player, so now it's gonna be a three v four. But then they also have Echo on the way, right? Who's gonna get back faster than our teammates? So they do have the advantage in this fight. We're going to start fighting a little bit, and we're just gonna see that we end up losing. So in that fight, it might have been just a smarter decision to wait a little bit and and try to get our team back, but. Um, we end up fighting the fight, and then we see that we lose it because look, look, look at how many people they have now, right? They got mm -hmm. the Echo and the and the and the Mora got back faster than these guys over here, right? So they mm -hmm. we just lost so many people that probably would have been worth it to just regroup, right? Rather than going in, and then this means that we end up losing, and then that that gave up a you know an extra additional fight we probably could have had. All right, we're just gonna go for an extra minute or so here. All right, so. Last lost round there. I notice how far we're, you know, we're not going to do anything from that distance. We're trying to get in close to people. Just keep that in mind. So would you not even bother shooting from that kind of distance? Because I kind of I feel like well, I, I, you know, I can reload, so at least I'm doing something so good. So I would say that you bother shooting if that's the only thing that you could be doing, right? If, for example, you're just running in from the front line, and you're just sitting with your Ryan, then go ahead and shoot. But the thing is that you probably should, but the the, the thing that I'm say, uh, saying here is the fact that we're just AFK, or not AFK, but we're, we're, we're just sitting here without moving, right? It's the fact that we're not attempting to close the distance, right? We're not trying mm -hmm. to get closer. Whereas here, we probably should be trying to get closer. So whether or not we- I was more concerned with trying to stay near the objective before it activated, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yep, not, not usually gonna be a concern. Like I said before, usually you wanna prioritize winning the fight over getting the objective because Okay. here you know whoever wins this fight's gonna get the objective right we can just skip yeah. skip ahead of time right yeah and just and just see right who 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 won the who won the objective right we won the fight or no we're, we're 
we're, yeah, we're, we won the fight, therefore we got the objective, right? Most of the time, even, like, even if you get the objective and you lose the fight, you're only getting, like, 10% old chart, or 10% mm-hmm. off the objective, right? You're, mm-hmm. it's, that's, a, that's good, it's just not worth it, right? Because mm-hmm. now here we're going to get, you know, a whole 20 seconds by the time the next fight starts, right? Um, and keep in mind, percentages are seconds on the yeah. on it. So we, we get a whole... Before the next fight starts, we get a whole 20 seconds, right? So you, you really want to focus on winning the fight, not not just capping yeah. the point. And that's that would mean... Good. Good? Yeah, that's good. That's a good way to think about it, yeah. Yep. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and leave here. So now we're going to go over a quick review over everything, and then from there we're going to get into uh, the, what are the main points of the session, and then we're going to wrap up the session after that. So um, we're going to, I guess, start off on Reaper here since we went over Reaper recently, and then we'll go over we'll, we'll go over some holic specific stuff after that point. All right. So uh, starting off with ability usage, we just talked about it recently, right? We're just our main kind of uh, play style or how we're using our ability rotation is going to be TPN, right? Shoot at stuff. When we feel pressured, then we wraith back to our team. Um, I probably say the one that we struggled more with was our wraith, but we also I think we also maybe didn't TP as much as we could have been TP. Yeah, no, I, I must admit I do probably have to use that because I, I don't know. I guess I just don't really see people use it as much as. That's probably because they don't really know how to use it effectively. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, th- that that's that's a good point. Like, uh, really, in general, it's not the best idea to try to like unless you see some someone use it s- use something successfully if you're yeah. just taking something that's used averagely yeah. and, tr- and trying to yeah. take that as like a uh, it's not really going to be a good idea to try to take advice from low rank players right oh so, no i, I don't exactly I'm not, I'm right <laughs> so yeah unless you see someone do something amazing and it worked out really really well you're probably not going to want to copy everything everyone does but in any case right <laughs> I'm sure you do. <laughs> wraith a little bit, or sorry, TP a little bit more often, TP behind people, and then Wraith, we had we messed up a lot more often, and Wraith, just make sure that you're, you know, you're getting aggressive when you have it, when you when you don't have it, you're playing a lot more passive, because we played aggressive when we didn't have it, and then also, um, most of the time, you're not going to want to play aggressive with your Wraith, like, we did this, where we were, we're like, one HP, and we'd Wraith, and to get up next to somebody, and then we just cancel it and then get on top of them. Most of the time, you're going to use it to get out. That is acceptable in some, in some instances, but probably not in some of the ones that we used it in. Um, the only times where we would use that and get aggressive is if, like, we had health and backup, right? Like, we could use it to catch yeah. up. To, like, we use it for speed, for example. Like, let's say we if we have the advantage. Let's say we're chasing after one person or we're chasing somebody. Like, we, we're we chasing somebody and we have, like, our team with us, right? And we're full HP. Then we can fade to just get catch up to them faster. But we're not going to want to do that if we're already half HP and it's, it's 1v2, right? That's us purposefully taking an engagement, like, a, purposely taking a duel where we're at a disadvantage, right? We don't want to take duels where we already have a disadvantage you take tools where you have the advantage, not disadvantage. Okay. Right. So now moving on, um, blossom usage. Um, make sure you, you know you're getting the surprise advantage when you're going for it. TP behind them when you're going for it. Come from a high ground, something like that. Shoot before you ult. That's going to get you a good little burst of damage. Make sure that you're scouting before you're going for it, and that there's actually a bunch of people around you, not just one person. Um, with your ult as well, make sure you're not ulting in a won or lost fight, and make sure that you're most of the time you're going to want to use it on the earlier side in fights. Um, now we didn't talk too much about that, but just to keep that in mind as well. Most of the time you want to use it, you know, you don't want to hold on to it, right? Um, and then I think that yeah, because the, once they've seen you, kind of thing like you were saying. Yep. Late. And then on top of that, ults that are used first just get more value, right? When like for example, they haven't let's say they have an enemy blossom, right, on their team, they blossom first. They're gonna get kills, and therefore, when you blossom, it's just not gonna do as much because they they got the kills first, right? Their, your team has less follow up, and therefore, you're not gonna get team support. You're not gonna get healed. You're not gonna have tanks to help you out, and you have less teammates to capitalize on the kills you get, right? So, ults that are used, and then it could also force you to end up just not using it at all if you lose the fight and never get a chance to use it. So, most of the time, you want to ult semi early. You don't want, you don't want to use it too early to where your team's not in there with you and the fight hasn't started, but you don't want to hold on to it. All right. Now, moving on to mechanics. Um, make sure you're you're keeping your ranges in mind, right? Don't try to shoot people from here, right? Because uh, you know we're not really accomplishing very much, right? Even within an entire cliff, you're, honestly, like sometimes this is even worth it because it just draws attention to yourself, right? Maybe if like somebody's literally one HP, you can do this, right? Mm. But 
You're not going to want to spend too much I'm time sure that didn't this. work with the Echo earlier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she was at like 5 max. Yeah, but then she got healed up. after she, That was fine when she was at 5 HP. When she got healed up, then that's not something you want to do, right? Um, now, on top of that, make sure that we are... Okay, so, I guess, so we'll do over that in Hog in a minute when we get on Hog. Um, make sure we're getting up right next to people on Reaper, so we're staying within our respective ranges, right? We're, we're a close range character. And then honestly, not too much else with our mechanics. Um, just make sure we're hitting headshots as well, right? This means that uh, we didn't go over this at all, but just make sure we're aiming head level, right? We're keeping across there here. Yes, I mean, like, I, I, I kind of game on all platforms. Sometimes I wish I had started this out on PC, but I kind of committed to it on uh, <laughs> on console. I find it much, it's much harder to mm. get yeah. super accurate. Yeah, um, and it's, it's, it's kind of less about being accurate. It's more about just making sure you're carrying around your crosser at this level. So um, basically what that uh, means is that... I'm with, I'm with you, yeah. Yeah, so like, you know, if we're aiming just just walking around, aiming like this, then our natural yeah. shots just come here, right? It doesn't require mm -hmm. anything more than just making sure we're keeping it there, right? Mm -hmm. It's not any more adjustment that we need to make, right? Um, so now moving on from mechanics on to... Um, Positioning, honestly, we didn't talk too much about positioning. I don't think positioning was terrible either. Um, you, you had pretty decent cover usage. Big thing was just, you know, knowing kind of your play style with, like, how to get behind people. Make sure when you're TPing, yeah. you're doing it from behind cover. Um, make sure, you know, coming in at a surprise advantage. And then try to get around them so you're getting around tanks. Um, besides that, I think that was it. I don't think we talked much about positioning. Um, onto awareness. Big, big one here, right? But we're gonna, there's a bunch of stuff, so we're going to go around the block here real quick. Um, HUD watching, pay attention to your health bar. There's a ton of times where we made this make made wrong decisions just we did, we didn't pay attention to our health bar. Yeah. Right? Especially when you see you're taking damage, take a look at it, right? Press I need healing when you have it. When you when you see that your health bar is full HP, don't you know use hog you know use your healing on hog, right? Make sure you're getting you're playing more passive when you don't have health until you get it back. You can play aggressive when you have health. When you don't have health, you're playing passive, right? Um, now pay attention to uh, I think that's it for HUD. On from that, make sure paying attention to kill feed so that you know whether or not you're winning or losing fights. All right? We just went over that recently. One to two is a one or law or sorry, is a um advantage or disadvantage. You play more aggressive or passive accordingly. Two to three is a one or lost fight. You know ults, and then you want to look to get Get super aggressive or super pat uh, or sorry too progressive or you look to get out or die right so you don't stagger or you uh, stagger the enemy team as well right now on from there you also have paying attention to your surroundings right and paying attention to the like this one's just a kind of an all-encompassing like pay attention to where's my team at where's the enemy team at right paying attention to abilities that are happening paying attention to those things that are happening around this right because there are a whole bunch of times where we just may we just weren't, weren't paying attention to our surroundings right where doomfist was laying on the ground and we didn't see him where mm -hmm. we had a monkey bubble in front of us and we didn't see it right where mm -hmm. we were um, uh, where some other ones where like there's a brig then onto the next note is paying attention to compositions right pay attention to the fact that they have a brig so you don't get booted off the map pay attention to the, mm -hmm. the fact that they have a diva so you don't get booted off the map that was the other thing with positioning as well don't stand next to the edge right and just be prepared for boops mm -hmm. um and try to learn from your mistakes, man, right? When you when you make a mistake of walking near the edge multiple times, right, you can kind of look at that and go, snap, man. Uh, obviously, that was a mistake, right? I, I walked off, I, I jumped, or sorry, I booted off the map, right? Because I stand next to it. So maybe in the future, let's just make sure I'm not standing next to the edge, right? Maybe I should just stand somewhere else, right? So that's just how you improve and, and learn from your mistakes is identify the problem, identify the solution, and then try to apply that, right? Now, um, I think that that is pretty much it. So main point i'm uh, sorry hog first right hog um make sure you're right you're right clicking left clicking at the appropriate distances yeah. right yeah right click is within 10 meters um right and then left click is or sorry right click is outside of 10 meters right anything past 10 meters and then left click is within 10 meters right so you're doing your da best damage at the right ranges um in general it maybe looked like you're shooting a little bit slower like this is holding it down and it seemed like maybe you weren't holding down your shots sometimes so you just look to do that whenever it's an option is just hold it down um other than that make sure you're putting a lot of concentration into your abilities the abilities are a big thing on our hog um maybe even bigger than i probably say they're pretty even on reaper and hog right um with your with your uh, healing, make sure you're not healing yourself when you don't need to with your hooks make sure you're putting a lot of concentration into effort and effort into your hooks right Whole hog, make sure you're next to people because you don't really do any much da like any damage at all when you're this far away from people. Like, look how much tickle damage we're doing from back here. Yeah. Um, and we were even further away than that when we were doing on people. And that's a, and that's a training bot. <laughs> yep. Um, now on top of that, look to hook into your ult. 
make sure we are doing all the same stuff for the ult that we talked about in the other one. And then I think that that is about it. Yeah, make sure you're aiming at head I, levels. So we I don't think I've ever hooked into an ult. What do you say? I don't think I've ever hooked into an ult, yep. bro. That's not even a technique that even occurred to me. So. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's going to get people close to you um, and allow you to use your ult a little bit better. Right? So we can try this out in a second here, right? We can hook. Oh, they got launched past me, man. <laughs> I don't even know what happened there. They like went behind me, right? And then that gets them close to us so we can use it, right? So now I think that's it. So main points, right? Number one, I'm probably gonna put at awareness as awareness did have a made, resulted in a whole lot of um, poor decision making and um, you know a lot of bad decisions which resulted in deaths, which resulted in us not doing what we could have done. All right, number two, I'm going to put at ability usage, as ability usage was a big deal across both of our different characters, I'm making sure we're using our abilities better. Number three, um, hmm, I'm trying to think here about which one to put next. Um, probably going to put number three at our ultimate usage. Number four... I'm going to tie for both mechanics and our positioning as both of them just needed a little bit of work. Not They definitely weren't the... They, they still need a lot of work for both of them. They're just not as important and necessary as the other two. So that's, those are the two at the bottom and then the other ones I want to make sure you're focusing on first. All right. Um, any pr questions about anything we've gone over? No, I think I think it's really interesting. I think it's been helpful. I've definitely got some food for thought. So, you know... Yeah, I'll uh, All right. <laughs> try and put something into action. All right. So that